So why are these types of implants particularly important for women that do have breast cancer that need reconstructive surgery? Um, why are polyurethane implants particularly good for, this, for these types of patients? You've got to look through history and you've got to understand what, what we're all trying to achieve. Uh, when I was brought up in surgery in, in the 80s, a thing called immediate reconstruction after mastectomy was not basically there. The, the principle was that if you remove a lady's breast for cancer, you had to get the wound healed and you had to make sure there's no recurrence before you then did a reconstruction. And the reconstruction, the options were um, putting some sort of implant in there or an expander to dry and blow everything up. Generally speaking, that would thin the tissues and it would never give a great result because you're looking at trying to expand something into a new space which was very, very thin. Or you introduce tissues from the back to the front or from the belly to the, to the chest. And then you use that as padding to, to have some sort of implant. And then along came uh, so-called free flaps and tissue transfer from the tummy uh, up to the chest. And you can get some really, really nice results. But the trouble with that is the surgery can take anything from about five or six hours up to 12 or 15 hours. Mm. And there's a pretty high complication rate when you, you bear out that you can actually do something really easily. Now the trouble with the implants that we did have was they had a high complication rate. You know, you're talking about a very high number of women, for example, that would have radiotherapy, and if you had a radiotherapy and an implant, they would go hard. And hardening is a, a, a cause of morbidity. Uh, it's painful, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't look right. So un until the polyurethanes were understood, uh, their, their activity, the way, the way they react within the human tissue, the, this contraction I was talking about, the, the collagen isn't in a circular fashion, it's actually arranged in a three-dimensional, if not probably five-dimensional um, uh, uh, form of which apparently all the forces of contraction all balance out. So we, we're talking about a, a rate of less than 1% of women yeah. will go hard over 15 years. And, and then it becomes yeah, totally cost-effective for the NHS to forget about all these free flaps, to literally at the time of mastectomy tuck an implant in because we now know it's safe. And if we don't get a good result, you can still have your free flap. But by and large, in, in today's austerity, uh, it, it actually should be a cost-effective way of, of dealing with breast cancer reconstruction.